right, folks, welcome back to Sports Journey Broadcast Network. Uh, myself, Lake Lewis, and as we do every Wednesday here on Sports Journey Broadcast Network, uh, we bring in a good friend of the network. Obviously, he's part of us, uh, our agent here, uh, Jesse White, and another gentleman that you haven't seen in a couple of weeks. I went back home, San Diego, and he's here with us again here in studio, uh, Mr. Tommy Lovelace. What's going on, guys? Hey, how are you? All right. Now, we're going to break down uh, the top games of this week uh, in the NFL, and Last week, uh, Jesse and myself, uh, we, we came up with our five, and uh, I have to say he, he got four of them right. Yep. I got three of them right. Can we reverse that this week? Tommy's going to join us and uh, find out what he thinks as far as some of these top games uh, that are going on in the NFL. Uh, we'll let Tommy start since he is the, uh, the, the guest today with oh, Jesse and myself. Man, I feel so privileged <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> okay, let's see. Kansas City and Philly. The coach is going to have a welcome back to Philly, but he's going to come back and get a loss. So I'm right, going so with Philly over Kansas City. See, to me, I've said this, that Kansas City was going to be that surprise team. You guys remember me saying that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they haven't proven me wrong. I think they're going to get better and better. I think Andy Reid wants to win this game, clearly, because he did some great things in Philly. Um, and, and I think the way things kind of, you know, went afoul in Philadelphia uh, for him, as far as we understand the situation with his personal life, his son uh, passing away. Uh, but we also remember the fact that this was a Philadelphia team that just less than two seasons ago was a, a chic pick to be the Super Bowl champion. Mm-hmm. Didn't happen. He's out of Philadelphia with Kansas City. I'm actually taking Kansas City to go into Philadelphia and get a W. Yeah, Andy Reid going back to Philly. Mm-hmm. I think Kansas City is excited. The team's excited about the way they've started, really getting into his system. I think they want to win this for him, even though he may not be telling the team too much about it. I think they're going to buy into it, uh, play a little harder this week for him. I have Kansas City taking it as well. All right, so Tommy's the, the the odd man out on this, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, another big game this week, um, Houston at Baltimore. Uh, I know when we were talking about this, you know, in pre-show, I, I was thinking that, is it really a big game? I think it's a huge game for both teams. One, if you're Baltimore, you're the defending champion, you need to show people that you can beat a good team, and you need to show people that you're still considered a good team. But if you're Houston... Houston doesn't play the same on the road. They've proven that over the years, even though they've been one of the better teams in the NFL. And what better way to show people that this year you're for real on the road by beating a hungry team that desperately needs one in the Super Bowl champion Ravens. So with that said, I'm still taking the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going with Houston. And with that, I think Baltimore – they have such a new team. I think they're going to be fine in the long run, mm-hmm. but they still don't have an identity with that offense. Are they a passing team? Are they a running team? Yeah, uh, that's a good I point. haven't fully figured out what they're doing there. I don't think they know. Houston may not play the greatest in big games. Mm-hmm. It's only week three. It's not that big of a game sure. for them, and they know who they are. You're going to get Foster. You're going to get Tate. Schaub hitting Andre Johnson if he clears concussion mm-hmm. tests <laughs> and gets out there. I think that they at least know who they are enough that um, they're going to be just fine. Okay. Tom? I pick Houston to go to the Super Bowl, so I have to go with Houston. I think that Houston is actually coming around. The defense is starting to play more together, mm-hmm. and the offense is starting to click a little bit more. And uh, not 100% sold on Shab, but uh, <laughs> he's been coming through. So Yeah, yeah. That, that's the wild card with Houston is what can this guy do? He's going to have to take them to where they need to go. We'll find out. So both you gentlemen take Houston in this game. I'm the lone person out in Baltimore. Uh, Our third game, big game for you folks out there. This is our top games of the week in the NFL coming up uh, starting Thursday, actually. Uh, Casey and Philadelphia led our list. Um, Green Bay at Cincinnati. Packers looked good last week, albeit a a (laughs) poor defensive effort, you know, for the Redskins at best. Uh, And then on top of that, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. Um, but they're going to be out. They're going to be without Eddie Lacy, though. Right. You know, um, we we did see Starks come in and play well for them again against a porous defensive effort. Um, Cincinnati's riding high right now. Uh, good win this Thursday against Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Are are they going to be a team that 
can keep it going because we know Andy Dalton and A.J. Green and those guys are great young players. And I think Cincinnati is right there at the cusp of taking the next step to being, you know, an elite team in the NFL. What better way to prove it against, you know, story franchise Green Bay Packers? Mm -hmm. I'm actually taking Cincinnati in this game. Yeah, Green Bay has an explosive offense. They can attack you so many different ways. Jermichael Finley seems to be playing better again. Mm. Uh, he was had kind of dropped off, it seemed like, for a while there. And Rodgers is getting back in sync with him. He's running hard. You look at the – granted, it's bad tackling, but look at the run down the sideline, mm -hmm. breaking two, three tackles, keeping his feet in. A big, big plus and, on their uh, offense, definitely. Yeah, Jordy Nelson's looking good there. Mm -hmm. uh, if Starks can run well, that adds another dynamic to that offense. That being said – Cincinnati has been in the playoffs the last two years. And if you're going to keep being a playoff team, which I think they are, you have to defend your home field. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have a lot on offense. I think that defense is getting better every week. And I'm actually taking Cincinnati as well. All right. Tommy? I'm taking Cincinnati as well. I think they got Trifecta. I think they got the, uh, <laughs> the, the missing piece on that puzzle on the defense mm -hmm. with getting Harris from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And they got leadership there as well. And that defense brings it. Yeah, they, they definitely have a – a different mentality there now and they have one of the better defensive tackles if not the best in, in, in football and Geno Atkins so uh, we're both taking Cincinnati all of us uh, fourth game um, we're, we'll, we'll wait till we get to our last one because there's a little bit of reason why that uh, but Indy at San Francisco even though it's, it looks good on paper I think Indianapolis is getting blown out this game I, I, I think the way San Francisco played uh, against uh, Seattle, you know, just a, a nationally televised game and you get just beat down against a bitter division rival, you know that, uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh is going to be upset about that. <laughs> and you know they're going to have a physical approach in practice this week. I actually think, unfortunately, Andrew Luck's going to be the, the beneficiary of that, that anger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're going to come at him, and I think that he's going to be a guy that uh, – you know, there, it's going to have to be a special effort to be able to win this game out there in Candlestick. So I'm taking San Francisco. I don't think it will be a blowout, even though I'm not sure what I would classify as a blowout, but I'm taking San Francisco as well. They have way too much on offense. I'm not sold on Indy's defense being able to stop it. I think we're going to see another Anquan Bolden or Vernon Davis performance like week one. Sure. Uh, they're not playing at Seattle against Seattle's defense this week. So it's going to feel a lot easier mm -hmm. than last week. And Andrew Luck, I'm not. they have some issues at running back right now, getting that running game going. If you get one-dimensional against San Fran's defense, they will kill it's you. going to get Well, we'll ugly. also think about it. Kaepernick has something to prove, too, because he didn't look good either. No, you know, he and he had a great first game against Green Bay last week. He missed some passes early, and he just he never got settled in the game. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was very unsettled. And I think that this is a game that – you know, let's face it, these young guys know about the other young quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and we're talking about Andrew Luck, who some people still would say they'd take him over any of these young quarterbacks. So there's a little bit of a, you know, competition there. So I'm sure they both want to play well. And then, of course, the big story, obviously, is the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Andrew Luck's playing against his former coach mm -hmm. in college, you know, and Jim Harbaugh. So uh, and he's going back home to the Bay Area. So. Uh, big storyline there. Tommy, who are you taking? I'm taking San Francisco. I think they're going to beat the brakes off of Indianapolis. And I also think <laughs> that uh, Luck might want to invest in some extra strength Tylenol because <laughs> that defense is going to come strong. Um, I know Jim Hardball from back in the Bear days, and mm -hmm. he's very intense after a loss. <laughs> all right. So uh, we all agree on that one again. And then uh, we have a, a couple more, like, wild card games. But before we give you our fifth game, uh, let, let's get into some of the wild card games. Uh, uh, we have uh, Atlanta at Miami. I think this is a, a, a really good matchup. Atlanta is just one of those teams that you just don't know which Falcon team you're going to get. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in Miami right now, you're a little happy because the team you're getting in Miami is a young team that's starting to believe in itself. And, and, and as much as we talk about these young quarterbacks, you know, Russell Wilson, RG3, uh, Colin Kaepernick, Andrew Luck, the, the one quarterback that's in the same class that you really don't hear much about is Ryan Tannehill. Mm -hmm. He proved last year with a team that had really no Nothing. talent that he could be a leader and he could take them somewhere. This year, they look like they believe in him. They have a young running back, too, and Miller. Uh, I look at Miami as a team on the up and up. Oh, absolutely. So who are you and I'm actually taking Miami in this game to go 3-0. and That doesn't even sound right. I know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm taking them. <laughs> yeah, Atlanta, 
Atlanta is very tough at home. Uh, I think this hurts them that they have to travel. I forget what they went at home last year, 7-1, and 8-0 one, and oh, Sure, one, one loss, uh, one loss. 7-1. Mm-hmm. They're going to Miami. They're, that's they're very hop, good. Hop, skipping this. It is. Yeah. But at the same time, maybe it's a – you you're know, outside. You're not Miami, yeah, but you're not outside. I mean, you're not inside, inside either. Yeah, right. True. Dome teams yeah. don't play well traditionally on grass. So, and so you have in Miami is a little different. <laughs> yeah, you have Julio <laughs> Jones and Roddy White that are both a little Banged chipped up. up right now. Anyway, mm-hmm. now Julio's still playing out of his mind. He's, Roddy he's isn't because I got him in my fantasy league. <laughs> and I'm struggling with them. <laughs> yeah, Julio's looking very good right now, and they have a little bit of a running game out there. But I think being nicked up is going to hurt them. Uh, Miami's looking great on offense. Heartline's playing pretty well. Not a big game last week, big game two weeks ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then you have Mike Wallace who stepped in, had the big game. So if you uh, have that nice dynamic, you mentioned Miller at running back, picked it up a little bit in week two from sure. week one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing enough out there that I think being at home, I'm also taking Miami. Cool. Wow. And I, I, we already know Tommy's not because you I keep saying, you know, Miami. Uh, I'm, I'm actually – I did pick Miami because uh, wow. you, you, you never know what uh, – Matt Ryan's going to show up for one thing, and they have all the pieces to the puzzle, but uh, I don't think they looked at the directions to the puzzle yet. So, <laughs> so Miami, we have yeah, another Miami. trifecta. That's yeah. three times I'm getting a little worried here, folks. Oh, my God. I'm agreeing with you guys. I'm worried already. <laughs> yeah, you uh, won't on this one. Well, this one I was going to say, yeah, you already read my mind. This may change. Uh, we already know this guy played in, in, in Texas, you know, uh, so he's a self-professed cowboy fan. <laughs> uh, it wasn't too far. I've actually played in the same stadium at SMU. However... The Cowboys right now, a newer stadium, by the way. Uh, they have St. AT&T. Louis coming into town, yeah, AT&T Stadium, and uh, this is a game again. If you're Dallas and you want to show people that you're consistently Inconsistent. w- ready to be a good football team, you have to win this game. If you're Jeff Fisher, you're trying to show your young team that you can beat teams that, that, that people are saying could, are talented enough to win their division. I think this is a game, this is a trap game for the Cowboys. It really is. I do think Dallas wins this game against St. Louis, but I think it's going to be a hard-fought 20-17 to 17 type game. But I'm taking the Cowboys. With well, St. Louis, oh. they've been within a game or two of the playoffs the last couple years. They've had a younger team. Sam Bradford's been growing through the whole process. I think that this is a year where they're going to be right there. I think that they have a very good shot at making – it has a wild card this year, actually. Sure, I like St. Sure, Louis. Sure, sure. In that they, division? In that division, I do. Oh, no. um, I'm sold on They played a very they, tough they're, game. They're, good, they're a good football team. They're, they really are. They're, they're they good, but. held tough with Atlanta in the Georgia Dome <laughs> last week. So that was an impressive game, in my opinion. You look at the Cowboys. They, again, have the same problem. Bad clock management, late in games, not using their weapons. They're having big games. Des Bryant starts out very strong. Then he just falls off, nowhere to be found after it. I'm not blaming Dez, but something in that system mm. needs to change. They found a way to lose a game they should have won against Kansas City. But then I look back at the Giant game, six turnovers, and they barely eke out a win over the Giants, who are now 0-2. I'm not sold on Dallas. Uh, I'm actually taking St. Louis in this game. All right. There's another person there for you, Tommy. Who are you going with? <laughs> of course. You should never ask the question, who am I going with? I'm going with the Cowboys. One day the light's going to come on in Tony Romo's head, and we're going to go to our Super Bowl that we've been what day expecting that, to go to for the last four or five years. <laughs> Man, the last, what, almost 15 years has been that long. Come on now. But it, almost 20 years, I think. Well, anyway, 1995, yeah, we're almost 20 years. <laughs> 18, that's a long time. Okay, so look, so one game we left off, obviously, where we stand, right here in the Washington metropolitan area, uh, near and dear to a lot of people, is, you know, the Redskins-Detroit Lions game because the Redskins are struggling right now, folks. Make no mistake about it. And I think that this is a game that if you're the Redskins and you need a game to kind of feel good about something you obviously you're playing at home this is a team that has not been playing they're not running the same offense and I know some guys have come out on other outlets and say no we're running the same offense Robert's just not running there's more to this story and trust me I haven't talked to some guys there's a little bit of a discontent there you know if, if there's such a word I mean they're they're there's something going on in the locker room where some of the guys don't 
really understand and fathom what's going on and what's to be expected from them. The problem I have is in the preseason, this team went 4 0 in preseason. We all know games don't count as far as the W's, but what did count in my eye test was every player who stepped foot on the field ran the same plays from first string through third string to the guys that are cut somewhere else. They ran the same offense. Pat White looked like Pat White from West Virginia. I mean, he ran the same offense at RG3, so supposedly should be running. Right. That's not what I've seen the first two games. And with that being said, it's affected not just Robert, but it's affected Alfred Morris. Mm-hmm. It's affected the passing game. It's affected the continuity on the line. You see, uh, you know, things where guys are jumping off sides. And to me, Tommy, we both played. You played football in college. Obviously, I played basketball, totally different sports. But the one thing we all can agree with at the highest of levels is you need to be put in the right positions. Absolutely. And this, to me, boils down to coaching on both sides of the ball, on special teams. These guys are not being effectively coached the way they should be because there's no excuse for pretty much the same group of guys to be this just out of sorts. Disarray. I understand that Robert's a, a great talent, and I understand that he's, he's a dynamic player. But this offense moved up and down the field with his backup, Kirk Cousins, too. Right. I don't care if you put Kirk Cousins in right now. They're not doing anything if they don't run the offenses that they're used to. This is a game, in my opinion, the Redskins are going to win. And this has nothing to do with where I sit. I just think that Detroit, historically, if you look at the numbers, they've, they haven't won here. I think Detroit has never won here. I don't see it changing. I think that... There's something to be said about them coming to D.C. It just doesn't work out. I think this is a game the Redskins finally feel good about something, and I think they're going to run the offense they're supposed to run. So I'm actually taking the Redskins. The Lions, when they've come here, it tends to get ugly. Mm -hmm. They tend to lose pretty big. I remember a few years ago the Lions were looking like a playoff team, and they came to Washington and just got beat down badly. (laughs) And it's the same script almost mm -hmm. that's set up here to look like that. And I think Washington's in a situation where week three, you can't call it a must win, but for all intents and purposes, they're in yeah, a must you, win you situation. Need to, you need to get a W um, here. If you don't get a W here, it could be ugly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and with a win, they'll at least be at worst within one game of the division still, not lose any ground. And, you know, I think you're right. There's been so many little mental mistakes, untimely holding penalties, untimely offsides. Um, interceptions that hit a receiver in the chest and bounce up in the air and get picked off. Mm -hmm. Just little mental lapses that have made a huge difference between continuing to drive, ending your drive, and putting your defense back out there on two minutes rest. Uh, And I think that they probably kind of sat down this week, and I'm sure the coach calmly spoke with them about some of these mistakes. Oh, yeah, that, uh, I, I was told that they're they're practicing in uh, full pads today, you know, yeah. that, 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 you know, Mike Shanahan was not happy and um, said practice is going to be a lot more physical, mm-hmm. which, again, I'm not a coach. You know, the guys won two Super Bowls, but I will say this. I don't think practicing in full pads is going to prove anything. If anything, you're going to get your guys worn out before Sunday. It, it, it doesn't when coaches think that somehow you need to put on pads to prove that you're a physical football team, that's uh, put the guy in the right position to be physical. Yeah, and the pads aren't <laughs> – I don't know how I feel about the pads, but I think something needed to change. Anything in your week Well, I can tell you what needed to change. Just call the right place. <laughs> call, well, call the playbook that you ran through the league in. There was, this was the third highest scoring team last year mm-hmm. to – did you know this? Denver and New England. Who were the two quarterbacks for those teams? Two best ever, probably. Brady and Manning. Robert Griffin didn't even play the full season, Mm -hmm. and they still were in that category. What are you changing? Listen, I understand the knee injury and all that stuff, but if this guy's saying I'm 100% and he's been, you know, tweeting about it and going out on any outlet to talk about it, my thing is let's see. (laughs) We're going to run the offense now, and if you buckle up, not to sound crass here, but if you buckle up, it's part of the sport. Yeah. You can't hide your toys. I'm sorry. It's like you have a Ferrari that you just had the engine worked on, but you don't want to open it up on the highway to see, it. can it <laughs> can it run fast again? Can, yeah. it, can it drive fast? 
That's exactly what the Redskins are doing now. Shame on you. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind changing something the week-long workout, though, just to maybe jog something in their minds that, okay, we're doing something different, so this week will be different. Just anything that you could change. I don't know that I like the full pads, but I don't mind the change of routine. But I am taking Washington in the game. I'm not picking Washington because I saw how they played the first uh, half of the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. And – Detroit got a little special weapon as a receiver. <laughs> and if they're giving up yards like they were 300 yards a half passing, mm-hmm. and you got Megatron, mm-hmm. I mean, you're in real trouble. And you have a Reggie Bush who, oh, who seems a little rejuvenated mm-hmm. as well. Matt Stafford's thrown for 5,000 5, yards, yards last two years. Yeah, People don't realize that. Detroit's going to come in here and put it up. Something that has not been talked about that I do want to bring up here. This Detroit Lions defense, people don't talk about them as being one of the top defenses, but what I do know is they have a little little chippiness to their defense, oh, especially their defensive line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. talking yeah. about your quarterback. Mm-hmm. Is this the game now that you want to test? Can he really come back and run that, that read option? Well, I bet you he will be running some <laughs> yeah, whether he'll, it's he'll be running whether you want to be or not. Okay, okay, but see, that's the question. I heard Kyle Shanahan come out two weeks ago and say in this read option offense, he believes that it actually protects the quarterback more. It does not. Well, it, but, but, but if he feels that way and he, and, he, and he has proof of that in his mind, then why haven't you been running it? Mm-hmm. My question is this. Do you want Robert in this game against this type of defensive line who, who can be a little edgy, a little dirty, let's be honest. A little finey. Do you want, <laughs> right, do you want him playing in the read option or – do you want him sitting in the pocket? Read option. Read option. And the reason I say that exactly. is he will get <laughs> killed in that pocket. Oh, he sure and will. Really, that's what they're expecting. Detroit hasn't seen him move in two weeks. Mm-hmm. They're going to be bringing everything into the pocket. They're going to send have everybody. room to get outside the pocket. Must win situation. You have to run it in a way to do something that they don't expect, that they haven't seen yet this year. If they're conservative in the first half, it'll be another first half like the first two weeks. All right, and I'm going to go further now with this. This is obviously our our segment here that we have on here, (laughs) red-skinned. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but if, you know, I have people tell me all the time, you know, you you cover other teams or you, you do stuff with other players for other teams, but I'm from Washington. You know, this is my hometown. Obviously, I'd like to see my hometown win games because it's good for the town when you win. It's not just about the, 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 the 53 on the team. It's a, it's, it, it brings money to the city. It's good for the economy. The Nationals right now, a couple games back in a wild card, they were left for dead just a couple weeks ago, and they're back in this thing. It would be great for the town, and it also give me some stuff to cover, which would be more <laughs> positive. But, but if the Redskins were to lose this game, you you guys know you, you're from here. It's going to get real ugly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when I say ugly, I don't think the Shanahan era has ever seen how ugly it will get. You're talking about fans now who are already starting to say, what about Kirk Cousins, which is a terrible move. That, that's the move that does not need to be made. But if they lose and they're 0-3, do you consider now playing Kirk Cousins and letting – Letting Robert rest a little more. Can Kirk Cousin play defense? No. <laughs> okay, I was just wondering. Chris. Yeah. I think, quite honestly, if they give up another 30 points, especially in one half, I think we Jim may Haslam be looking may at a change gone. at defensive coordinator. You may see Raheem Morris being named defensive coordinator. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I don't think you can bench RG3 at this point. You've put him in the game. Now he's out there. If you had set him for a couple of weeks and let Cousin start and then switched, I think it would be different. It seems like you're almost throwing That's a, a fair point. You would shatter. Well, maybe not. Maybe he's stronger-minded than I think. But, Robert, it seems like once he's out there, if you pull him back now, what does that do for his confidence? confidence. I agree. I, I, I can, you can already see his confidence is a little shaky right now. Um, you well, know, he wanted to play in the preseason. He, and they he did, and they wouldn't let him. Yeah, and, and, again, it, the, the issue I have here is that there are guys out at, at Ashburn, and I know living out there, and I know from covering this team for two years that – there's some egos there that everything is done my way, mm-hmm. and I know what I'm doing. Last year, when the comment was made as far as evaluating players and talent, I, I know what that was said. And myself and other colleagues in this market will never change our mind. The towel was thrown in. 
I know these guys, I know these players, and these guys played for each other. And they finally did that. Rest, no Redskin team had ever done that, maybe going back to, unfortunately, when Sean Taylor passed. That team came, came together, did some special stuff. Last year, this team played for each other. They won seven straight games. But let's not get ahead of ourselves because those seven straight wins, one team went on to make the playoffs. They ultimately won the Super Bowl, the Ravens. But even after that game, they beat the Ravens. The Ravens fired their offensive coordinator, so they were in a little bit of a disarray point at that at that time. I look at this situation right here where I feel like there's different thought processes going on out at Redskins Park. Some people want Robert to run this read option. That, that's what we're saying. Some people think that you can't get him hurt, so he should learn how to just stay in the pocket. No. That's not who he is. Not that's not what made him a special player. That's not what had him win the Heisman Trophy. It's almost the equivalent of saying the worst team in the league this year, if they can draft a quarterback and Johnny Manziel comes out. We all know that Johnny Manziel is not going to stay in the pocket and look like you know, Peyton Manning. Not at all. <laughs> right, exactly. but you, so you can't take away what's made him a special football player. Mm -hmm. Injury or not, Kobe Bryant is going to be coming back in basketball from, uh, you know, from an Achilles tear. But it's like saying to Kobe, when he comes back, we still we don't want you trying to dunk the basketball. We, we, we don't want you, you know, trying to uh, 360 uh, under the basket or burst off on guys. We don't want to see that. You can't change what a guy is. Right. And in my opinion, unless I see Robert Griffin buckle and lay down on that field again, I'm going to run him till his tongue hangs out his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know why you wouldn't. That, like you were saying, that's who he is. He's extremely accurate as he's moving around. Mm -hmm. Might as well use it. Uh, this is going to get interesting. We'll, 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 we'll see how this plays out. So, uh, folks. I'm well, picking Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> you, 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 you said that a couple of times. I just want to make sure you heard yeah. it. <laughs> This is Victor Cruz, wide receiver of the New York Giants, and I just came off the show at Sports Journey, had a great time with Blake, and I uh, definitely want to come back and do it again. Maybe I'll bring some, some friends next time, and I uh, had a blast. I here at Sports Journey, having a great time, being on the show several times, giving me a chance to vent, tell people, and really connect with the fans how I feel about different situations going on throughout the year, especially with the NFL, uh, and I love it. Uh, have, have met a lot of people out here and just going to continue to come back and continue to grow this relationship with me and Sports Journey and my boy Lake Lewis. With uh, Lake Lewis on Sports Journey, had a good time tonight. Uh, felt comfortable just being myself. It was a great interview, a great time, and uh, you know, I'd love to do it again. What's up? That's a good pour. Frosty glass. Perfect amount of foam. Thanks, Coach. How's your Bloody Mary? Spicy. Wings? Always fresh, never frozen. All right. Who's the primary on Spider 2Z snag? It's the fullback out of the backfield. If he gets jammed, I'm heading the flanker on a curl route. You are good. I know. Huddle up at Hooters. Why would you go anywhere else, man? Let me tell you some of the reasons people get into trouble with credit cards. A job loss or salary cut, an unexpected expense, a divorce, a business loss, or even helping a family member or friend in need. At Consolidated Credit, we understand that debt problems are not about overspending. It's about emergencies and unexpected situations. Consolidated Credit has helped over 5 million people, just like you. The options for getting out of debt have never been better. We can reduce your interest rates, cut your monthly payments, and help you get out of debt fast. The time to call Consolidated Credit is now. There are a lot of ways to get into trouble with debt. There's only one trusted way to get out, Consolidated Credit. When debt is the problem, we are the solution. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call toll-free 1-800-426-6016. That's 1-800-426-6016. Call now. If you're disabled and unable to work, pay attention to the following message. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits through Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, we can help. 
You'll be matched up with an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, deal with Social Security for you, and handle all appeals. Best of all, there's no fee until you receive your benefits. To get started, call the number on your screen now. And keep in mind, there are a vast number of conditions that make you eligible for disability benefits and dozens of additions that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call the Citizens Disability Helpline today for a free, no obligation consultation. Call 1-800-735-0219. Call now. Health Insurance Update. This just in for all uninsured Americans with or without pre-existing conditions. The recent health care bill will not take effect until at least 2014, leaving families and individuals lacking health insurance with no immediate solution to their concerns. Meanwhile, medical problems continue to be the number one cause of bankruptcies. Here's the good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide affordable health insurance for all uninsured Americans and yes, uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Call the number on your screen now and in less than 10 minutes you could receive a choice of affordable plans from the hotline network. This is not a discount card. You will have access to doctors, hospitals, dental care, infant care, and emergency services. Call the health insurance hotline now and get you and your family covered today. Call 800-794-1817. That's 800-794-1817. Call now. You know, we, we have another segment we wanted to go over and, uh, you know, Jesse, my agent, uh, was over at, at my house uh, on Saturday and, uh, and Josh was to his brother and uh, we witnessed a, a, a beatdown of epic proportion. <laughs> and then Tommy was in San Diego and Tommy witnessed a beatdown of epic proportion. You, if you saw the fight out there with Mayweather and Alvarez, you witnessed a beatdown of epic proportion. Why didn't C.J. Ross witness that? And yet it was a majority <laughs> decision. 114-114. That, it, it, you know, I, I, obviously on this show over the years, I would never say anything negative about another human being. But that person, obviously, she stepped down today. She did. She should be ashamed of herself. Absolutely. Because she set her profession back. She set the world of boxing, which is already crumbling right, right beneath us. It, it, it's sad, and I tell people this now. Whether you like Floyd Mayweather or not, I like him. You need to look at this guy because, for one, he's the greatest boxer of all time, in my opinion. If he's not the greatest boxer of all time, he's one of the top two or three of all time. The problem is this: he could very well be the last great prize fighter, mm -hmm. and when he leaves, cripple boxing might be in some serious trouble. I mean, yeah. it's boxing. There's great fighters coming up, but I'm talking about. When you're talking about a guy that a lot of people don't like, but yeah, he's the richest athlete in the world, there's something to be said about his drawing power. I don't know if there's another fighter. I mean, Adrian Broner's a good young fighter. But is he a guy that you're going to give up money for to watch? No, what, Adrian, the difference between a person like Mayweather and Adrian Broner, Adrian Broner wants to be a rapper slash boxer. <laughs> Mayweather is a boxer. You don't see him in commercials. You don't see him in television shows. You don't see anything. You can't even see his sparring sessions. Yeah, yeah. They're closed to the public. Yeah. I mean, know? he's he's a he's a pure prize fighter. Absolutely. He's a throwback. He's, he's a, a guy that you would well. think that played that 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 fought in the eighties. Mm -hmm. You know, with Hagler and Hearns and Leonard and those guys. And I think he would have held his own too. Absolutely, he would have. It's just sad because. If you look at the list of fighters that he's beaten, he's beaten, you know, seven, eight different champions. And I'm talking about... Eleven. Oh, I see. That's what I'm talking about. And these are multiple, multiple, multiple weight, clan, class, weight champions. class champions. Yes. But people are going to say, oh, they were old. You know, oh, when he fought They're De La Hoya, young. they rolled De La Hoya in a wheelchair up to there. That, <laughs> listen, he beat the guy that was in front of him. You can't say that about Alvarez. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that had 40 fights and was mauling people. 42. Yeah. Well, 42, 0-1. <laughs> 0-1, yeah. mauling people. A lot of people said that this is the one fight that if Floyd Mayweather doesn't come ready, he's going to lose. He barely there was got touched. No, I was going to say, there was no time in that fight that except for when they were face-to-face. -face <laughs> that was the closest you know, he got that, to him. That was the closest he got to him. Every time I see Mayweather now, and I can say this over the last two years, every fight that he's had since his father's come back in his corner, 
he's actually gotten better. Absolutely. And we're talking 36 years old. You you want to see some stuff declining? He doesn't have to show you great hand speed now because you're not going to hit him. But now he's showing me a little bit of power. And there were a couple times that I thought Canelo was getting ready to see the canvas. Mm -hmm. But Floyd doesn't like that, though. No. He'd rather just beat you up for 12 rounds. Yeah. That's more unanimous, in my mm -hmm. opinion. You guys saw the same fight I saw. Ross might have had uh, old contacts, and it looked, the fight looked blurry. She didn't know who was Mayweather. That's <laughs> Somebody could have slipped something on her. I don't know. I don't know. But, but this is, this is a, a question that I think Floyd may have to ask. I know he's under contract for, what, two more fights? Three more Three fights. More. Three more. Four more fights. He got six. Well. 180 million. Listen. Oh, okay. Listen. He's fighting now to make money. That's it. Because he's not fighting. No, I'm saying he's not fighting an opponent. He's just only. The only reason that he has to fight right now is because you can make. When you can make 60 million, why not? <laughs> Forbes magazine said that Mayweather is a half a billionaire. Okay, so listen, <laughs> listen, why does he need to continue to fight? Because in my opinion, no one can beat this guy. No. I don't want to see him. You understand, when he fought Alvarez, you could tell he was ready for this. Oh, yeah. You could see his body was ready. You could just, I'm not saying he never was ready, but there are guys that he could beat with no effort whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He came in this fight like he did Hatton, ready to oh, prove yeah. something, and he destroyed the guy. Mm-hmm. I don't like the other guys that are out there for him to possibly fight because he won't get up for them. It, and I don't want to see the inevitable uh, of uh, of a fighter. Father Time will catch up to Floyd, oh, no absolutely. matter how you look at oh, it. Of course. Do you retire now where you just clearly are pound for pound the greatest of all time? No, I wouldn't yet. He still seems to be like he's... I think there's a couple more people he really want to beat. Who? Pacquiao? Is he one of them? Pacquiao will have no chance. And, but, but that would be a money fight, though. Garcia, because he's the up-and-coming. But he would kill him. Man, there's... there's they would there's, build a fight up and talking about I, 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 he's going to beat Mayweather because he's... <laughs> and he would just destroy him. Tommy, you, you, you do understand this. Mayweather doesn't just beat guys. He tarnishes your career. <laughs> oh, yeah. And because he, he exposes your weaknesses for the next person to get to you. And put doubts in you. And head. nobody wants to see you anymore. If, if you knew Alvarez was fighting four months from now, would you be inclined to want to pay for that after what you saw? The only reason no. I would is to see just how great Floyd was. You see the way <laughs> Alvarez looked the fight before and the fight after yeah. where he just destroys people mm -hmm. and how he, he looked like an amateur against Floyd. I look at Alvarez now as like because of what Floyd did. Like, is this guy any, is he any good? <laughs> you know, but he makes everybody look like uh, exactly. Yeah, so you know, he destroys your drawing power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to me, I, I just don't know at this point if I'm Floyd. I mean, yeah, if you're gonna give me sixty million dollars, I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> but well, outside of the money, he's not fighting anybody. He's just he's just getting paychecks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's, that's incredible. That. I, I mean that. <laughs> I just find it to be incredible. Like I said, folks, if you don't like Floyd Mayweather, you know, for whatever his antics are, that that's understandable if that's your thing. But as far as him in the, in the ring as a tactician, I mean, I've never seen anything like this. A pure boxer and the art of defense. And, I mean, he, he people like, oh, he's just going to run from Canelo the whole fight. He was standing right in front of him yeah, until he, the 12th round. He did. 12th round is the only round he right. kind of was moving Dancing around. around. He's like, he, he, I don't need to do anything. Right. It's Why my would he? Exactly. Right. You're not going to catch me and still one. He stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with but him. But there were times where the, the shots that – I give Canelo Alvarez credit because he was taking some vicious shots. Oh, yeah. One of those uppercuts that <laughs> oh, slipped man. his guard. I thought his neck was going to snap. Yeah, he, he, took some, and he took some shots to the body, too. That that's what I'm saying. I know I know you know they're saying that Bernard Hopkins is telling Floyd to come up to 160 and he can come down and fight. Bernard, you're trying to make some money Bernard off that man. man. That's all it is because he would beat the uh, he, daylights he, he, out of you. And, and 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 he can't. He see this is what what the problem is with Floyd. He has everything to lose now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's he giving up get, so much. They're not giving up. No anything. one brings anything to, to the table. table. I know they're saying Danny Garcia. I know you know the. Uh, uh, Adrian Broner. I, I've even heard uh, Amir Khan. Are you kidding me? Amir Khan was <laughs> laying on his back the last fight. You know, I think he was counting the lights and see how many were out. Uh, absolutely. There's <laughs> yeah. no one here. 
uh, maybe if I'm Floyd, I try to do a, a Roy Jones move. Maybe maybe I try to go up to heavyweight and fight Klitschko. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Because let's face it, if he loses to Klitschko, you wouldn't put that on. You wouldn't put that on really on his record. You know, he lost to a heavyweight. But what if he did the inevitable? I mean, or, or I mean, the, the the something that was not supposed to happen, and he beats a guy that's undefeated as a heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Do you know how much money that would draw on pay per view? Yeah, but he's five nine. He's not going to go up the heavyweight. <laughs> I'm just saying, just for the sake of mm-hmm. doing it. If you listen, if you know now that no one can beat you, and Klitschko feels the same way, do you know how much money these guys would make? Klitschko don't have any. There's no real good heavyweights. There's no heavyweights. None. <laughs> his they're, brother. They're, they're all playing. In, they're, they're all. They're all playing they, in the NFL right, right now. They're all in the NBA. That's you know, right. of most of these guys now. You look at LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Could yeah. an heavyweight fighter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you look at you know middle linebackers now. Patrick mm-hmm. Willis. You know oh, Ray yeah. Lewis before. Oh yeah. Those were Mike Tyson's. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> so now you don't see it anymore. Uh, boxing is in, is in dire straits right now. It's a hurting sport. Uh, you know. When we came over and Jesse came over, I mean, you know, I felt bad, man. You know, we had a good time, but yep. I'm thinking to myself, this might be the last time I pull out some chips and dip <laughs> yeah. because there's nothing else out there well, for the, me to see. A lot of the great fighters are going UFC now, and that's where a lot of the media coverage is, and a lot of the newer audiences are gravitating that direction and away from boxing. But I have to defend boxing on the UFC. There's nobody that's going to come into boxing after three or four matches. And fight Floyd Mayweather. No, I'm him. not a UFC no. fan. Me you know, I mean, because I know I have to cover it, but I'm, I'm just Brock Lesnar. That's not, Brock that's Lesner. not art to me. He, he was an NCAA champion in Division One wrestling. Mm-hmm. He was WWE. After his third fight in the UFC, he was world champion. Nah, you can't have that. I mean, yeah, that's, there's no that's, way you can. It's have impossible that. That, that a fighter could do that. Absolutely. That's like a guy in his third fight fighting. Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather. And that could get real oh, ugly. <laughs> you might have to have a cop standing on, yeah, the, on right. the apron right <laughs> yeah, there. Right. That could get real ugly. But any any of the champions, mm-hmm. you're not going to have mm-hmm. nobody go from another sport in the boxing after three fights and beat some champion. Do you well, think, I don't care who it is. Do you, do you think boxing survives, though? I, I do. I do because... The, there's a lot of people. The, the MMA is something new. Mm-hmm. It's like a new gadget. Okay, yeah, yeah. and people want to see the new gadget, the new toy on the. Board. Well, I, I don't even, you know, I, I've said this before, and I know, uh, you know, uh, Dana White and all those guys, and I, but I've said this. I said this on my show when he came on my show on ESPN. That listen, didn't like hearing what I had to say, but I said it. You can't compare that to boxing from a historical standpoint, no way. and from no the simple way. fact is, if your money fight grosses a million dollars for for each fighter. Come on, man. Are, are you kidding me? A million this guy dollars? just made 45 for the fight and, 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 and could be around 100, it was like 100 as, far as, as far as the pay-per-view proceeds. Yeah. I mean, no one's doing that in, in MMA. That's oh. just not going to happen. And also in MMA, they're not fighting 45 times. You're not going to see someone be 45 and 0. Mm-hmm. Right. It's mm-hmm. just there's not mm-hmm. – like, there's knockout potential in boxing anyway, but it's not quite the same. In MMA, a nobody – well. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, you can say it. You can say it. You can say it. You can can say it. You Absolutely. It's easier to knock you out and win that fight than in boxing. You're not going to have a nobody come up and beat a champ. That's kind of what you were talking about. Absolutely. Touching on. See, see, this is the problem, and it's the same thing that happened in uh, the USFL football wise. Mm-hmm. They had a spring league, and it was successful. After the third, fourth year, the Philadelphia Stars were they were beating everyone. Mm-hmm. Kelvin Bryant, Chuck Vecina, they had NBA. Uh, I'm sorry, NFL talented players. Well, what happened was the league started to think, you know what? We're going to make this a fall league and compete against the NFL. Death no nail right there. You, no way. So if I'm the MMA, I would keep boxing out of my mouth. Me too. I wouldn't even mention it. No it's way. just that this is our thing. Hey, great fans over there. If you want to check this out from time to time, great. If you're smart, though, I'm going to give you guys a scenario here that I've presented many times. If I'm MMA and I really want to try to make this something that's going to challenge boxing, if not challenge boxing, just be mentioned in the same light. Why not have your big fight coming up, Anderson Silva against, uh, the, the, I can't think of his name at the top of my head, who beat him. Why not make that the the main undercard of a boxing of the next main event. great main, main event. event absolutely and that's the same everybody thing I makes said. money yep. <laughs> I mean 
you're going to get two different types of uh, uh, cable subscribers. So now everyone's going to make more money. You know why they're not going to do that? Because MMA has an arrogance about them Absolutely. that they feel like they're literally taking out boxing. Yeah, right. Never. Never. <laughs> Never in to, a million years. They need to get some new blood in boxing, though. Some, and, uh, you know, maybe Alvarez. It's some be, there. It's, it's, it's some there. there. I mean, Adrian Broner's a nice guy, but his brashness may rub people the wrong way. Well, right. you know. It, w when you win and you're arrogant. Yeah, yeah. The, of course, but... If, uh, well, if always, you win, you you keep winning. People I, gonna come back. I always say, <laughs> I always say, if you don't like me being arrogant, just beat me and shut me up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like your daddy did. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the way, that, that's the way it had to be. <laughs> that's right. Well, well look, folks. Uh, I mean, this was this was good. This was good. I, I enjoyed uh, breaking this stuff down. You know, uh, we gave you a couple topics. Obviously, my agent Jesse White's here. My talent manager Tommy Lovelace from San Diego's here. Uh, we broke down our top NFL games of the week. Um, what is the game of the week, though, before we wrap up here? Green Bay, Cincinnati. That's what you think? You think that's it? Green that's Bay, Cincinnati? Say, that's the game I'm – well, aside from being a Redskins fan, that's the game I'm most excited about. Kansas City and uh, Philly. Andy Reid going back Absolutely. home. Absolutely. <laughs> that's – Getting a thrashing and going back to Kansas City. We get this thing started early tomorrow. Tail between his legs. And we got we to say what's up, too. You know, uh, uh, Sean Prater uh, yep. plays now for the Eagles. He's oh, like yeah. he'll be starting. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. that's, that's that's Nate. That's a, that's a good friend of ours, you know, right here. His you brother. know, that's his brother. And oh, yeah. uh, he'll, he'll be up there tomorrow. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. Last week, Jesse, 4-1. I was three and two. I'm gonna be five and zero. Oh. <laughs> yeah, how did I know that? But I have Dude, all these things written we down here. Seven games. We picked seven games how are you today. Be five well, those are the wild card. Those are the wild cards. Well, you Still, can't you know swap I'm, them out though. You know I'm gonna win those. You can't swap them out though. So if okay, you're seven and zero. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's folks. That's what you want. Seven and zero. Oh, it is. <laughs> We're out of here before they start bickering. Okay. We'll see you later. All right. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> Homeowners Relief Line can help save your home. We specialize in foreclosure assistance, and that's all we do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Homeowners Relief Line now. Homeowners Relief Line has a network of attorneys, and our agents are available to speak to you right away. New laws are in effect that may save your home, so call Homeowners Relief Line now. Wednesday is Wings Day at Hooters. Get 10 boneless wings and fries for just $6.99. Laser light therapy could be the solution to pain everywhere in your body. Dr. M. Scott White, D.C. from New Life Laser of Northern Virginia is here to tell us how. Now, Dr. White, you say that this new FDA-approved laser is truly a medical breakthrough? That's right. It's the most amazing device I've seen in over 27 years of practice. We're using the laser to treat all sorts of problems like spinal stenosis, herniated discs, degenerative disc disease, sciatic leg pain, and even arthritis. We're helping people eliminate their pain without the need for drugs or surgery. And I understand that you have an incredible success rate. Is that right? That's correct. Many patients feel significant pain relief after just one treatment. And you have a fantastic offer today. The first 25 callers who really want to get rid of their pain get a free spinal exam and two laser treatments absolutely free. Dr. White, can you talk a little bit about how this laser works? The laser penetrates deep into the body. It decreases inflammation, increases blood flow, and stimulates new healthy cell growth. The laser speeds up the healing process even in difficult cases that haven't responded to other treatments. Now I'm sure people will want to know, is the procedure painful? Not at all. In fact, patients actually tell us it feels like a warm massage. Well there you have it, a truly unbelievable no-risk special. The first 25 callers will receive a spinal exam and two laser treatments absolutely free. So don't wait. Call 1-800-PAIN-FREE right now.